Welcome to another episode of One on One. My name is David Stahl. And I'm Chris Reinsma. And Dave, today is our back to school one on one uh, program. Wow, so the summer has flown by. The summer has it? flown by, and we're starting to think about getting back to school. But before we get on to our topic for today, I want to ask you a couple quick questions. First, sure. could you tell me uh, what do you think the percentages of male mentors nationwide in Kids Hope USA? So, a percentage of male mentors. Male mentors. Well, I'm a mentor. Yeah. You know some other guys who are mentors? It's probably not 50%, so is it 47%? Not quite. Actually, about only 30% of our mentors nationwide wow. are men, so about 70% are female, obviously. Okay. Um, and then the number of per, or percentage of students referred, what percentage of those do you think are male students that are referred for mentoring? Um, well, let's see. If it was 30%, I'm going to say 55? Pretty close, right? About 60% of the kids that are referred to Kids Hope are uh, little boys. And so we, what we have ba basically nationwide is we have more um, females mentoring um, little boys, which is just fine. But just so you know, folks out there, if you have um, a friend who is a guy and, and you think they might be a good mentor, go ahead and ask them because we would love to see more male mentors in our programs because we have so many more boys that are referred to our program. Dave, let's talk about um, starting that relationship um, hmm. uh, this fall. And, and we're going to talk about it in two stages. First stage would be a brand new relationship. Right. And the second stage would be an existing relationship. So let's talk first about a brand new relationship. What are some of the things we ought to think about in preparing for that new relationship that a mentor might have with a student this fall? Okay, because if you're like me, you'll be uh, pacing around the house the uh, week before or at least the night before you mentor, mm. wondering, okay, what are we going to do in that first meeting? And here's some reminders. You've probably covered this in training, but I'll give you some reminders. Number one is lean heavily into that book about me. It's a great conversation starter which allows your child to express some facts and things about his or her life that are interesting. And it also allows you to do some sharing too, only you don't have to do it in a question answer format. You get to do it as far as in mm, the book about me. Absolutely. It's, a, it's an amazing tool. And here's the, here's the key to the book about me. Don't try to get it all done in the first meeting. Absolutely not. You know, let that thing spread out over the, you know, the first half of the year or more. Mm -hmm. Just do a section or two a day and maybe let your child decide which section you want to do. It's a great tool. That's uh, great. Definitely a great tool. Secondly, as far as tools go, check out the resources that are on the website. Directors, you know, you can go to the director web pages, but mentors and prayer partners have a website too for them now that you can go to the web, look at some resources as far as what are some activities you can do during the meeting and some hints and reminders. Mm -hmm. So go check that out. And all of this, rather than pacing back and forth, you can prepare. You can look at the book about me, become familiar with that. Look at the resources on the web. And then also, Chris, you can go to the game closet during that first meeting. Right. And what I mean by that is that like our program has a little, it's a, it's a file cabinet, a large file cabinet right. with games in it. Mm -hmm. So take a field trip with your child to go down there and look at the games that you have available. If your program doesn't have a game closet mm -hmm. yet, maybe take a few games in your Kids Hope USA bag to the first meeting and let your child decide what games he or she likes to do. Because right. even though I love to win at Uno, right. well, maybe James doesn't want to play Uno. He, maybe he'd rather play Trouble or he'd rather right. play Checkers right. or something like that. Let him do the choosing. Yeah, give them some ownership yeah. of what happens. But, but Chris, so I covered some of the, okay, what do you need to prepare for as a mentor before that first meeting? What are some activities for that first meeting? Yes. I think one of the greatest needs, though, is to have some perspective, some expectation as far as what about conversation during that first meeting? Mm. 
What do we talk about? What can you share with us about yeah. that? We talk about, um, in our new mentor training, we talk about going far in your relationship. And that's a combination of, of having fun, of doing the academics, which will come right along because the teacher will be providing some of that. And then there's this whole idea of relationship building. And I think that what you're talking about, Dave, is how do we kind of build relationship with the student in addition to having fun. So one of the ways that you can build that relationship right off the bat is by um, asking open-ended questions uh, to your child to find out a little bit more about them. And, and that's a great way to do that. It's just ask them about things in their life, let them answer those questions. But again, it doesn't need to be a high pressure thing. You don't want to pepper the kid with a with hundred questions, but just kind of let them answer. And sometimes you may get just a yes, no, kind of a thing because they're shy, whatever it might be. But just know that asking those open-ended questions is going to provide you with some good information about who the child is and, and that's how you're going to get to know them. Now, keep in mind that when you're asking questions, questions about family can sometimes be really sensitive because mm -hmm. um, yeah. some of these children are coming from families where there's some history there that, that often is not so pleasant. And so they may not be willing or, or wanting to share that, and you have to respect that. So again, I'd stay, stay away from a lot of really personal questions about family. Let those kind of emerge as the relationship sort of develops along the way. Does that make sense? Yeah, it sure does. And, and you know, Chris, I know a question that comes up a lot of times because we know what a mentor is, and you, right. kn you know what a mentor is. What is a, how do you answer a, a kid who says, well, what's a mentor? Because it could be the first time that he or she has ever heard the word, and all of a sudden, there you are, the mentor. Yeah. How do you explain what a mentor is to a kid? You know, I, I, that, that's great, Dave, and I think a lot of kids um, may not know because this is the first experience they've had with a mentor, an adult in their life, in this, this form. So I think that what you say is that um, as a mentor, I'm here to be your friend. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here to listen to you. Uh, we're here to have a good time together to work on some school things. But primarily, I'm going to be acting as, as a good friend to you over the course of the year. And letting them know that, again, you're not a replacement parent. Um, you're not going to fix all their problems, but you're going to be there. You're going to be a friend. You're going to support them and help them to have a great year at school. One thing I want to point out uh, on the web is uh, under the relationship building section of uh, our, our website for mentors and prayer partners, there's a document called Our Commitment, which is a great little tool that you could work through with your mentee that sort of explains a little bit about what the relationship is going to be okay. and helps you um, set some goals for the year. So I would encourage all mentors to, to take a look at the Mentor Prayer Partner website under the Relationship Building section, and then you're going to see the Our Commitment document. That's a great thing you could bring to your first meeting. Um, uh, as a tool to help you sort of establish what a mentor is for the year. It sounds like somewhat of a recurring theme here. Go to the Mentor Prayer Partner website to find resources and tools exactly. to help you mentor your child well. Exactly. Dave, what are some final things that you could do as a mentor? We've talked about um, activities you could prepare for. We've talked about sort of how you're going to approach the relationship. But what are some final things that a mentor could do to, to prepare for that first visit? Again, in the week leading up to your first meeting, I'd make sure you have contact with your director to learn mm -hmm. all you can about what he, what he or she knows about the child because your director probably knows why that child was referred into the program. Right. Now, there might be a lot of information, there might be a little information, but whatever there is, ask for it so that you know it right. will help you to know what to ask about and what not to ask about, too, yeah. quite frankly. And it sounds like some of that information kind of emerges over time. So, so when you first got the child referred, you may have known, the director may have known a little, but they may know a little more now. So just checking back with that director because there may be more information. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, and maybe it should have been most importantly, contact your prayer partner. Mm -hmm. Share everything you know with him or her and ask for prayer. Ask for prayer that you would find common ground and connection in that first important meeting. And I always ask my prayer partner, Steve, please, Steve, pray that God would help me have peace going into the first meeting and excitement to be sharing love and hope. Yeah, because that can be a really nerve-wracking kind of thing, that first meeting between them. You, you, know, you may not have been in there in a long time in a school, so yeah. going in can be really nerve-wracking. And as my uh, prayer partner, Steve, reminded me one time, he said, well, Keep this in mind, the little boy that you're going to mentor probably isn't giving this a thought until you get there. So you're the only one nervous here, right. Dave. And you know, that kind of helped me. Yeah, that kind of helped me. That's good. That's but, great. Uh, 
You know, Chris, I think it's come to that point in time that we need to shift gears and say, what about if you're entering into year two, three, or four with your child? Mm. What are some hints, some subtle changes as far as that first meeting that you should be aware of going into that multiple year relationship? Yeah, you know, again, your child now has had a summer. They're, uh, they're a year older in school. And so you have to be aware that developmentally they're, they're different than they were the year before. When you started last year with a first grader who is now a second grader, they're at a very different point developmentally. So just keep in mind what they're capable of and um, they're probably thinking at a little bit higher level. The level of conversation you might be able to have is going to be different. Keep that in mind. What I would ask you to do as a mentor going into that second year is try to think back what were some of the things that worked really well for you that first year? Some of the games that you might have played, some of the types of things that you did together, and, and have those kind of in your hip pocket to, to pull out um, to reestablish the relationship. The other thing I would say is that because you guys know each other now uh, pretty well after that first year together, is that the relationship is really at a point now where you can do some more goal setting, oh, and you yeah. can do you can you can really set some goals academically, mm -hmm. um, and and even relationally, um, projects, whatever it might be that you want to accomplish for that year. And so I would say that that at that first meeting set some goals for your year together and talk about that very specifically because the kids are going to be ready to move beyond maybe just the game playing and the academics and maybe they're going to be ready to do something a little bit bigger and a little more involved than they were the first year that they were with you. And you should probably get ready to experience an excited child to see you again. Mm. That first meeting the second year is often one of the, the highlights I think for a lot of mentors when they, yeah. they see each other for that first time. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, shall we move on to the next segment of our episode? Absolutely. All right, here we go. This is our, um, our contest. We draw one program from around the country that wins a $100 gift certificate to the new Kids Hope USA store. And Dave, you're going to spin the tumbler. Here we go. And I'm going to read the number off one of these balls. Who and is the lucky program? The lucky Chris? winner is number 308. I'm going to look on my list, and that's Ben Time Reformed Church in Hamilton, Michigan, not far from the Kids Hope USA office. Oh. Dave, Tina is the wonderful director over there. How can she claim her prize? Well, first of all, congratulations, Tina. And secondly, you have until 5 p.m. on August 12th to contact the Kids Hope USA National Office and say, hey, I'm Tina from Hamilton, Michigan. I'm the big winner. And when you do, we'll make arrangements for that $100 gift certificate to make its way to you. But Tina, you must contact us by 5 p.m. August 12th. So if you know Tina and mm -hmm. you're wondering, I wonder if she's watching this episode or not, call her, email her, text her, go pound on her door. Make sure that she watches this episode all the way through to the end and contacts us by 5 p.m. August 12th. Absolutely. Dave, this is one of my favorite times of the year at Kids Hope because it's back to school. We're starting to anticipate those relationships and back to school. Today we talked about meeting your child for the first time or coming back for a second, third, or fourth year. And what's remarkable about these relationships in your mind as you think about them? Well, Chris, as we start school this fall, there's going to be well over 700 church school partnerships, mm -hmm. programs that are operating across the country, and that's exciting. And in those 700 plus programs, there's going to be well over 12,000 kids who are either meeting their mentor for the first time or coming back for another mm -hmm. year with a mentor. Mm -hmm. Over 12,000, but the number that excites me the most is the number one, and that is one mentor like you meeting with a little boy or a little girl who desperately needs somebody in his or her life, someone who cares, someone who will show up, someone who will love them. And so, Chris, it's just exciting to know that 12,000 times one is mm -hmm. going to be happening this fall. And boy, I tell you what, that excites me so much. Absolutely. Because we know when you change a life, it's no small change. You know, Dave, this is the new season yeah, for one-on-one. It is. One -on -one. It is. Third season. Third season. Yeah. I think we need something new. The sign isn't enough. Well, the sign is good, but let's look at something else. What do you think? Well, hmm. Everybody likes music. 
Yeah, they do. I like music. Do you, you like? I love music. Yeah. Yeah, we don't use that theme song enough around here. The Kids Hope theme yeah. song. Maybe well, we could get a band to play it. Mm, uh, probably costs a lot of money. Yeah, so this place isn't big enough for a band either, I don't think. What if we sang it? You and me? Yeah. Like a cappella? Yeah. I like singing. Do you I like bet. singing? You yeah, said you liked yeah. music. Well, yeah, I like singing. I like the theme song. Okay. Yeah. You can, you can make a difference. You can, you can give hope to a child. That's awesome. You know, that was pretty good. That was good. Well, let's check with Elise to see if she'll let us sing. At the beginning of every show. Yeah.